Hi guys, welcome back. I am ready to talk about California now. So we did all the A's besides Alabama and now we're into the C's. So we're, we're getting somewhere. And California had a lot of options. I actually was, I was actually doing one all completely different. It was another cult video, but then I got suggested Wonderland and I got suggested to watch Wonderland. So when they were explaining it, I kind of was thinking like, this is all like Hollywood fabrication and no, it wasn't. It's all a true story and it is pretty crazy. So to start off, we're going to talk about John Curtis Holmes. And I had to Google who he was. He was famous in the, the 70s. And I'm honestly surprised that I did not know who he was, considering why he was famous. But we'll get back to that. So John was born in, guess where? Ohio. I feel like every video I end up back in Ohio. But he was born about 10 miles south of Columbus and his mom and dad got divorced three times from each other. They just keep going back together. Eventually, they just call it quits. And him, his three older siblings, and his mom moved to Columbus and they are living in a low income apartment. She ends up getting married again and the stepdad he was okay better than his his dad because his dad was an alcoholic and it caused a lot of chaos and then she moves and it's a lot of chaos there for him so then she gets married again and the stepdad just wasn't involved like he wasn't necessarily bad but he wasn't good it, he just kind of acted like not my kids not my problem type thing he ends up enlisting in the army at the age of 15 to get away from the chaos and he goes to West Germany for three years and then he gets out of the army and moves to LA. John is struggling a little bit with financially and he's bouncing around from job to job and then he becomes a ambulance driver and meets a nurse who he falls in love with and in 1965 they get married that doesn't that doesn't like secure stability for them because John is still bouncing job to job and he's really struggling one day he is in the bathroom and he's at the urinal and he's taking a piss and some guy comes over and he just starts peeing next to John and says hey you can make a lot of money with that thing. And John was kind of like, what the fuck? And um, the guy hands him his business card and he was like, I'm a photographer for a magazine. I want to take pictures of your penis. So John goes home and he calls him. I just, I wouldn't, honestly. Like, this was so life changing for John, but. I would not call the man from the public restroom to take pictures of my penis. I just wouldn't. But John starts making a lot of money. And he keeps it a secret from his wife. His wife's name is Sharon. I don't know if I mentioned that. But he kept it a secret from Sharon. Until she gets home early from work one day and sees that he is measuring his penis which was 13 and a half inches long so she's like hey why are you doing that he didn't try to lie at all he was like okay yeah i'm making a lot of money in porn and obviously sharon is thrown off she's like what do you mean you're having sex with women on camera and i didn't know about it and he was making three thousand dollars a day he did not care at this point he was like i sure am and that's grounds for divorce like pack your bags right now and get out type of divorce but sharon did not divorce him they didn't sleep in the same bed anymore they didn't have sex anymore but they had a really platonic relationship where 
if they see each other in the living room, they'll say hi, but that was kind of the end of it. They go about their lives almost as friends. But I feel like he easily could have lied about what he was doing because I don't have a penis, but I would measure it. I would measure it a lot, actually. Like, see if, like, a pinch to grow an inch was a real thing beyond Mythbusters. I don't know. Despite Sharon feeling embarrassed and grossed out at the big secret that John was hiding, John just didn't care because he was getting $3,000 a day. And that's more than I make in like two months. And he was making it in one single day. So he did not care that sh his wife was just mad and slowly falling out of love with him. So back then, I don't think doing porn was necessarily like illegal. Like you can go to prison for it. It wasn't as accepted as it is today. And you could get in legal trouble for it. The cops arrest John for pimping and pampering, I believe is what it was called, but he gets off, unintended, with being a informant with the police, and he continues to do pornography, but who he does pornography with, and like videos, and like who's filming it, stuff like that, he's turning them in to the police so they can get charged and he gets addicted to free base cocaine. It gets so bad that he can't get an erection anymore. And he has one job, okay? You can't get an erection. He was basically screwing, screwing over everybody. Like he can't perform anymore. He was hiding in the bathroom for five hours at a time. And watch this video. John, I'm gonna ask you some questions. You try to yeah, get a match. Okay. Okay, serious. All right. Um. <laughs> yes, what's the Do you have a question? This is not my fault. I'm just being if they were to make a movie, yes. if they were to make a movie about your life, what would it be a job? It would be about something different than my life. People wouldn't come and see me. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Why do you stay in the bathroom for five hours at a time? I, on set? I don't know. It's a shitty habit. I've got <laughs> I, I don't have a habit of doing that. Sometimes I hide in other places so that they can't find me. So usually the bathroom is the only place with a lock on the door. Um... Can't read your own writing. Do you read anybody face cam? <laughs> Just those who know me. <laughs> I don't think you're laughing at me. Do you always come on time? Stop that. No, I am incessantly late, uh, habitually tardy. And I'm talking about time come. On time come, you and me. Yes. On time, yes. Do you like women? Frequently. No, frequently. What happened when you were a kid and everybody saw that you had this big piece of meat there and they didn't have it? Weren't they jealous? Uh, some were, some weren't. Yes. Did did they? Then it wasn't. Then it was an obvious thing. How it was obvious since I'd been dropping it in the toilet since I was four. <laughs> About how you get started. In did Which you ever on. think you would be famous? Or I still don't think I'm going to be famous. famous I'm not famous. I did an interview on the street and you were famous. Everybody knew you. Everybody? Yes. There were almost everybody that was you. <laughs> do you like, um... Yes? Do you take drugs? No. Never? They take me. No, I don't take drugs. I don't even like aspirins. I am a kind of a healthy person. I don't so need you drugs. Are you vegetarian? No, no, no. I'm not a vegetarian, but I'm just basically healthy, therefore I don't need drugs. So I'm not the sick type of person. Mentally impossible. <laughs> I cannot pull off yet. Um, no, I'm not done yet. You just calm down and try to read your own writing. Like, no, I don't do drugs. I, I live a healthy life. With a cigarette in his hand. You don't take aspirin, but you're smoking a cigarette right now.
and you're obviously high. But John, nobody wants to hire him anymore because who wants to hire somebody to perform porn when you can't even get an erection? And he's getting real depressed. So Sharon, Sharon's an angel, okay? Like she is so kind because if it was me, this would be a different type of true crime case, if you get what I mean. Sharon becomes, she has like a side hustle of managing apartments. So she asks John like, hey, do you wanna be the handyman and I'll pay you? So he says, yeah, and he really likes it. He's taking a lot of pride in the handiwork that he's doing and he's like renovating all these apartments, making them look really nice. And then one of the tenants goes down and asks Sharon if her friend and his two daughters could stay in the apartment for a little bit. Not completely move in there, but just until they get on their feet. So Sharon says yes, like it's just a single dad and his two kids. So they move in and one of the girls' name is Dawn. And she's 15 years old. John starts making the most disgusting comments about her saying like oh I wish you were 18 and then he starts like waiting at her bus stop with flowers for her and uh, eventually it turned into like taking her on camping trips and having movie nights and Donna's easily influenced because she's a huge daddy's girl but like her dad wasn't giving her enough attention, enough affection. So she started moving towards wanting that from John, who was 31 and she was 15. But by the age of 16, he was having sex with her. He got her addicted to substances to make her easily controlled. And then he gets her her own apartment so he can just go over there whenever he wants whenever she would try to step away from him john would stop bringing her food stop bringing her drugs and eventually he told her she needed to drop out of school her sophomore year because he was jealous over the attention the high school boys were giving her and it led to him forcing her into prostitution so she could give him all her money so he can go get drugs for them. While all of this is happening, John is getting in a lot of trouble himself. He is, he's prostituting himself to men and women and he's selling drugs. He is using a credit card, like that's not his. He was getting credit card fraud, uh, writing bad checks and going in and out of jail. Eventually he meets Eddie Nash through a mutual friend and Eddie had a nightclub but his real occupation was selling cocaine I think selling all drugs but John was interested in the cocaine Eddie was really interested in John because he has nightclubs and this guy is pretty well known so to promote the nightclub he's like hey come to my nightclub on this night and I'll give you some cocaine and we'll be good, you know? So John was excited about that, but eventually Eddie was like, no, you like, you don't need to come promote anymore. I don't, I don't have the drugs to give you. Eventually John starts buying them from Eddie and Eddie wants paid, you know? But John doesn't have the money to pay Eddie. So he gets into a really big debt. John is breaking into, he's breaking into like Sharon's house, selling her furniture. He would wait for people to go on vacation, break into their house, sell furniture. Um, he was going to the airport and just taking bags off the conveyor belt and then selling whatever he could in those bags. So he continued to get in trouble and Dawn found this to be a chance to escape and go to her mom's out of state. 
John kept harassing Dawn, calling her back to back, making all these empty promises. If you have been in an abusive relationship, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And on top of Dawn leaving, Eddie stops giving John drugs because Eddie's like, hey, you ain't paying me no more and cut him off. So this led John to finding a, a gang of people who use uh, mostly heroin and they were called the Wonderland Gang because of where they lived. I mean, that was the street name of the house they would stay at. The person that owns the house is named Joy Miller. Uh, staying there was her husband, Billy. Billy really wasn't into drugs, but he was kind of lured into the lifestyle because he wanted that easy money. Joy had, she, she had previously been married to an attorney. She had a very um, luxurious lifestyle, but somehow wound up on heroin. Then there was Ron who had been dishonorably discharged because he was sneaking heroin into dead soldiers as they were getting flown back to America. David was a part of the Aryan Brotherhood and he had a girlfriend named Barbara. And then there was Tracy who was most of the time the getaway driver. So all those people hung out on this Wonderland uh, property. It was a townhouse but sometimes it's called an apartment so but here's a picture of it. <laughs> So the way they would get their drugs was kind of clever. I just, I don't know if I've ever heard of anybody doing this, but they would impersonate cops and then raid the house. So John is mad at Eddie. He goes over there and he's like, hey, we should rob Eddie. So John goes over to the Wonderland gang and he says, hey, we should rob Eddie Nash. Nobody should rob Eddie Nash. He is a very dangerous person and he has a really big dangerous posse. I mean, he walks around with a bodyguard, but they do. The, how they did it was John went over there earlier in the day, just like, hey, what's up, Eddie, blah, blah, blah. And then when he leaves, he makes sure that the sliding glass door to the back door was unlocked. And then the Wonderland gang goes over there, says that they're the police. Eddie is not stupid. He goes through everybody that had been at the house that day and it turned out, he was like, okay, this is definitely John. He sends somebody to go out and get John and bring John back. And as soon as John gets into Eddie's bedroom, they just beat the crap out of him and is like hey who did this blah 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 and you know we know that john has loose lips so he tells them everything and they're like all right get in the car they go and they go to the wonderland gang's house he knocks on john knocks on the door they say who is it and john says his name of course and they let him in because they just thought john was coming to hang out they didn't think that they were about to get murdered, but they were. John had to sit and watch as two of Eddie's posse members beat them with a bat. It started off with Barbara because she was sitting there watching TV. I think that she might have been the one that like let them in because then it goes to Billy and Joy who were sleeping in bed. Then they go to the next bedroom and they beat Ron and Susan. Four of them were dead. The next morning there was movers and like I think it was the townhouse over or maybe below but there were movers and one of the movers kept hearing a woman moaning and like asking for help. So he calls the police and 12 hours after they were beat, they find Susan alive, but she was beaten so badly she had no memory of what happened. Meanwhile, John goes to Sharon's house to shower and once again, she is an angel because 
hell no, I'm not letting you shower in my house. But she allows him to shower and he's covered in blood and she asks what happened. At first he says he was in a car accident, but then he couldn't elaborate. And so he just told her everything that happened. And then afterwards, like, I don't know what was going on in Sharon's head. That's kind of where that story ends. But then John goes and he finds Dawn and does cocaine with her. And Dawn said that she was... She was really concerned about him because he just seemed really off. Like, he was very pale, almost like he saw a ghost. The police are investigating the murder scene, and they find a bloody handprint above Billy's head, and it matched up to John Curtis Holmes. So, immediately they go and arrest him. He, again, loose lips, just tells them everything, like, yeah... Eddie's posse made me watch them murder people. Like, what? <laughs> but first, the police were skeptical because two of the gang members weren't there. Tracy and David. So, they questioned Tracy and David. Tracy had a court date. They were in another town waiting for their court date. Oh my gosh, sorry, my nails keep, I pick at them a lot. So if you see my nails in the video, David was out of town doing cocaine with prostitutes, but they both were very, they wanted the case solved. So they were like, hey, we robbed Eddie Nash the night before. And it, it all lined up with what John was saying. So they were like, okay. Everything checks out. It seems like they know what happened. But John was terrified to testify against Eddie. So John goes on the run and he takes poor Dawn with him. Like, I don't understand why he doesn't leave her alone. But he takes Dawn with her and they go to Florida. They were on the run for five months. But Dawn wasn't on the run. So she was pretty, hey, I'm right here kind of thing. I think it was probably like a cry for help. But eventually she gets out of the hotel room that they're staying in. And she just bolts down the hallway and she's screaming for help. She's begging for help. And John catches up to her and beats her right there in front of everybody. And it was reported. I don't know how they would verify this. Um... I know that Dawn has a book, so it could have been in there too, but they were not on drugs for the five months that they were running, so that was just John. Like John just chased her down and beat her, and that was just him. After that incident, he gets arrested and expedited back to California, and Dawn never saw John again. And this is where it gets all weird. They can't say that John was the killer. They could only say that John was there. They couldn't say that he was the killer because of a handprint. So they acquitted him of all charges. Like they didn't even get him for beating Dawn in front of everybody. That's insane. But in 1990, they were able to charge Eddie. I'm not sure why they waited 10 years to charge Eddie because John died in 1988. So he was like the star witness. So then Eddie, well, Eddie gets away with it because he threatens a jury member, which he ends up getting charged with later. But it was a hung jury because he threatened that jury member. So I'm, I, again, I don't know why they waited the 10 years. But they did. This case just reminds me a lot of the Patty Adkins case where it's like, okay, we know who did it, but why did they not go to jail? It, it's a little confusing, but that's the story of the Wonderland murders. And just a fun fact to end the video with, Eddie's daughter dug him up, like unburied him after he died. And she said she was looking for his real 
will because she didn't think that he left her so little but all she found when she dug him up was Eddie and some cigarettes and a bottle of vodka. She ended up going to jail for one year because of that. But that is all I have for the Wonderland murders. I really liked learning about this one. And I hope you guys did too. Um, oh, and I'm in my bedroom right now because the kids were being a little too crazy. So I'm kind of like hiding back in here so they don't bother me when I record. What you don't see is Rover over there at the foot of my bed because Rover goes everywhere I go and two full baskets of laundry that I should be folding but I would rather talk about the man with the 13 and a half inch penis apparently. So thank you and have a good day. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs>